everybody, Mo here, and in this video, I'm going to be going over my Mist Wraith, just mid-range deck. This is my take on the deck. It blew up in popularity, uh, and the very last, over the last, like, uh, what are they called? Vault Day? So, usually Vault Day is almost like patches, because everyone just gets two decks, two new decks that they've been waiting to play. So the meta shifts a lot, just about every, every Tuesday. And so I originally first saw this list, I saw a Twitter link of somebody hit Masters and they said they played a bunch of different decks but mostly this one. And I looked and I saw, I was like, oh, this is a really nice mid-range deck. I'm going to throw it together. So I literally copy-pasted his deck and then I played it for about 50 games and then I made some changes to fit what the meta transformed into. And on Tuesday, I specifically said, I want to play this deck because this deck can't lose to control and it beats aggro decks because you can play slowly and gain life. And everyone was hyping up an Ezreal deck. Swim was playing an Ezreal deck on Sunday, hyping up PNZ. And Legends of Runeterra, literally when they tweeted out on Tuesday, they asked people, like, what decks were they building? And they said, we're building an Ezreal deck. So, of course, if the biggest streamer of the game hypes up a PNZ Ezreal deck, and the literal game itself tweets out that they're hyping up an Ezreal control deck, people are going to play a lot of control. So I uh, adjusted this deck to fit control, and... Uh, we just stomped it. We just stomped control a bunch, and then a lot of people started playing this deck. So about 60% of my matches are the mirror match. Easily 60%. So the version I have right here is more to win the mirror match, and you kind of just lose to Fiora, but we'll get into that later. So this is my version, my take on it, and I'll explain every card real quickly. Uh, I'm going to try and go fast, so that way this video is under 10 hours long. And so basically you have Elise for... Early game fearsome creatures, and it synergizes fairly well with your spiders. I just won a game with the flipped Elise, giving all my spiders fearsome. Just nice. And so it's just standard two cost unit. And it's a lot. I play 18 two costers in this deck, so you have a lot of early game interaction. Uh, the other champions are Thresh. I play a Thresh. A lot of people don't play Thresh anymore. They play Elise Hecarim or Elise Hecarim Zed. And I play Thresh because it's really good in the mirror match. You can use Thresh to pull just about any creature except for a triple buff to Mist Wraith, and that'd be pretty good. As well as that has three powers, so it can block the fearsome creatures and the mirror, ma mirror match. Oh, get out of here. We have and two Hecarims. Two Hecarims are basically just your finisher. This is what you use to close out games later on. Uh, just for followers, so you have a two mana Mist Wraith. This creature is really good because it starts off small, but then you get bigger with more mist rates and then wraith caller is a really nice card it summons another mist wraith you just have your typical two mana three two fearsome spider you see you'll notice that every creature in this deck has fearsome except for thresh and hecarim so you really prey on the aggro decks by just surviving early game by playing your creatures that are usually bigger than theirs and then they can't block anything so they literally don't have a defense against you because all of your creatures have fearsome so we play Mist Wraith, the Spider, Frenzied Skitter is really good in the mirror match because it drops your opponent's power by one. So let's say they open with double horror and you have two horrors of your own. If you drop Skitterer and they have a three-powered creature, it turns their three-powered creature into a two-powered creature and now they can't block your fearsome units. And you're able to randomly get in an extra like seven points of damage that your opponent just wasn't expecting. As well as it can be good on defense if you're playing against an aggro deck and it's your opponent's turn three and they already have three to four creatures in play because they're playing, you know, noxious aggro. You can drop this and it'll negate four damage and it can block a creature fairly well. So that's good. Wraith Caller, like I said, it's a really high value card. It's four mana for a four three and usually a three two. If not, at least a four mana for a four three and a two two. That buffs all your other missed wraiths. So that's just high value card. As well as both of them that fearsome again raza is in my opinion one of the top like two cards in the game right now if not top three cards for sure you just kill something on turn seven sometimes what i find myself doing is on turn seven i'll attack with this like really ugly one one to try and bait my opponent into blocking if they don't block then you just kill it off with glimpse if you get two spell mana on turn seven you can glimpse beyond your own unit, and then you play Raza, and your opponent can't do anything about it. And the last big creature we have is Commander Ledros. And this is more for the control matchups, just to make sure that 
you win the control matchup super hard. It can be used in a mirror match, but typically it's just to close out control games super quickly. Um, Riot Games doesn't have common sense, so when it says cut the enemy nexus in half, it rounds down. So anytime it's an odd number, you'll lose an extra point of health, which means if you're at 1 HP, and, or if your opponent's at 1 HP and you cast a Ledros, it kills them. I have no idea why it's like that. I really hope they change it, because I think that's absurd. It should not be a thing. And yeah, that's why he's in there. As far as your spells go, you play a couple pump spells here to get in some cheeky trades or just explode your opponent out of nowhere. You have Vile Feast to you know, help you in the early game, kill off little one health units and give you a spider. The one one spiderling is really good for your Glimpse Beyonds and to trade, or just to chump block so your Black Spears become active. Glimpse Beyond's pretty self-explanatory. You kill a unit, draw two, really good. You're playing a mid-range deck. Usually I don't glimpse unless my opponent's using a kill spell on my opponent, or on my creature. So if they're trying to kill my Elise, I'll glimpse in response. Since your Elise is going to die anyways, you might as well just get two cards out of it. Black Spear is just a kill spell, it's really good. Uh, you'll see, notice that the deck is Shadow Isle Ionia. The only Ionia cards you play is Triple Deny. And that's because you want to make sure your Wraith Color hits every time. And Deny is just insane, so there's no reason to not play Deny. Other, if you're not playing Deny in this deck, you're kind of just playing a full Shadow Isle deck, which is pretty nice. Then some tech I play is I play the box. I haven't seen too many decks play the box, but in the mirror match, this card is insane. Because it comes down the same turn as your opponent's um, Wraith Caller. So your opponent can cast a Wraith Caller on four mana, get two pretty decently sized creatures, and then you can cast the box. And for the same mana, you just negated one of his you know big value plays for the same. Also, you can play it on turn four, if your opponent doesn't play Wraith Caller, but they play, you know, double two drop, like they play an Elise or a Horror, that's still a two for one. And you're, that's just a lot of value can be done with this. It can kill Hecarims when he plays a Hecarim and attacks. You can block Hecarim with the three power creature, and then the box kills the entire board on attack. And the last one is I play it one Grasp of the Undying and two Vengeance. I go for the later game kill spells because I'll notice the more you already beat control. So you don't have to worry about losing these. If you're not playing these, people are playing, um, like, Wither. The deal one damage to all enemy units and then drain three. And then they're playing the, like, really stupid 2-2 elusive that draws a card. I think the card's really bad in this meta. Everyone's playing, like I said, 60% of your matches are going to be this matchup. And the 2-2 doesn't block anything with Fearsome. So you're basically spending three mana to draw a card. And it also makes the chances of you hitting on Wraithcaller lower not by too much because you're only playing two copies of it but by enough to i'd rather just play vengeance in the mirror match and draw to kill your, their hacker before they can attack or something like that so that's uh the deck list now the general game plan here kind of depends on the matchup but for the most part you're a mid-range deck so what you're doing is you're just going to play a threat on turn two a threat on turn three turn four turn five turn six or seven you're just playing pressure every single turn to whittle your opponent down, all of your creatures have insane value by themselves. They're all very strong creatures. So you'll never not have a threat in your hand. And that's why this deck is so consistent. And my favorite decks to play are consistent decks. That's what I always played in every card game. So this deck is just insanely consistent. And that's the biggest upside to it. Is that it doesn't matter what matchup you're playing. You'll always have a two drop. You'll always have a three drop. And you'll usually have something to do on turn four. And onward. So the value in this deck is really strong. So your game plan against aggro matchups is just to play early game creatures and survive until late game. And then you play your big creatures like Raza and Ledros or Wraith Caller, and then you just kill them once they run out of cards. And then your matchup against control decks is you just play one creature at a time or two creatures at a time, and you just kill them. Like, you don't have to worry about board wipes because you play one Mist Wraith, and that's a 2-2, two -two, and then you play one Horror, and right there, that's five power that you put down by turn three and you put them on a four turn clock. So they have to answer. On top of that, you play denies in the control magic, which is nice. And if they ever try and kill your creature, you just glimpse and then get more card advantage. So you'll always have a threat against control decks. So that's why it's nice. Um, the matchups that this deck is really good against is everything except for the aura control so far that I've played against. The only deck I'm consistently losing to is Fiora control. And that's just because they play a Fiora on turn 3, and they buff it plus 3, plus 3, and then have protection on it, and you can't really do anything. Uh, you can't really break protection until you get, like, a Vengeance on turn 7, or, you know, like, turn 4 or something, but by then, 
they either have a deny or it's probably too late. So uh, that's probably the worst matchup so far. Then again, you know, people can brew decks to beat this, but so far that's the deck I'm consistently losing to. And so that's basically just the deck overview. And now I'm just going to play some games with it and show you guys why it's the best mid-range deck and, in my opinion, the best deck in the meta right now. All right. The mirror match. Here we go. And not put that one. <laughs> I definitely won't. Okay, the mirror match here. Yagami. I think I've played against this guy a couple of times. So we keep the box because it's really good value. We don't need Vile Feast because he has nothing with 1 HP early on. And we'll get rid of Hecarim. Or hopefully more early game creatures. Nice. So we have Mr. Wraith into Wraith Caller. That's pretty nice. Okay, if he plays an Elise, we'll drop the 3 2 and then just kill the Elise. That card, that card's also fine. We'll also block that card. Yeah, we're at the control deck now since we have a Ledros in our hand and we have the box. We're basically just looking to make the game go long. Looking to make the game go long. We also have Thresh now, so... That's usually how this deck ends up playing out in the mirror match because of how I built it. I usually try and make the games go longer. And I try and turn into the... I don't try to, but most of the times I turn into the control, like, slower deck. Because I play cards like the box, I play cards like Thresh. Cards that just are naturally slower and more reactive cards. Okay, so now if he plays Wraithcaller, we have the box on curve. Not play Wraith Call. So now we can play Wraith Caller. And hope he doesn't play Wraith Caller. <laughs> that is, in fact, the play in here. Hopefully, he just has like a grasp, and then we can put our own creature in response to his grasp. That was not so sure. That card's so bad. Look at that card's gonna do nothing. That card is two mana draw a card. I'm not pressured by a 2-2. Can't block anything. It can block... Akron minions, I guess. <laughs> Just think of if this card was any of the cards I put it in, in for this card. So if this card was either a Vengeance or a Grasp of the Undying, it'd be just 10 million times better, right? Alright, guess we'll get in there. All of these. The reason I don't just want to slam Thresh is because I want to leave the box open. And his best block here is to go onto the 4 3. And then we still get in for a 6 and we re remove one of his creatures. He's going to pump this up. He's going to try and kill it. Oh, double drain something. Alright, because of that, we are just going to glimpse our own creature. So it denies them both 1-1s, one and we draw two cards. Okay, now I don't think the box is going to be useful, because I don't think he's going to play two creatures on three mana. Probably just going to play one creature, probably like the 3-2 or something. And we're just going to drop our mystery. Oh, it's just going to be a removal spell. Sure. All right, we're definitely winning this game. And this and the mirror match glimpse from beyond is usually what determines the winner, because glimpse just gives you so much uh, just hard advantage. Because like right there, that glimpse, yeah, it stopped me from doing three damage to him. But in return, it denied him two health, it denied him two blockers, and it denied him or and it drew me two cards. It drew me into a Raza and a, a uh, grasp. So overall, I think we win. Five, six, seven. So usually here you can play a three mana card and a box, but we're just gonna hope he plays a three mana creature here, and we can box two creatures. And if he doesn't play, or if he just goes straight into attacks, we'll just drop Thresh. Yeah, glimpse of the Undying is really big. So if you're in the mirror match and you can deny your opponent's, if you can deny him from 
drawn two cards with glimpse, you probably should. Probably should, because it's probably worth it. Come closer. There's no lease. I don't fight. The box would have been nice there out of two for one them, but overall we're fine. So we can pull the Elise and we get into the more fearsome. And then if he pumps a 2 2 and blocks here, we get Raza. And Raza will clear away his creature. But he probably plays his own Raza. And that's fine. Fun fact, a trick to get around Raza too is if you have the drain, the two mana drain, make a 1-1 spider. You can do that in response to Raza most of the time, even on one of your own creatures if you want to. And you can make a 1-1 spider and then Raza will kill the 1-1 spider instead of one of your, like, good creatures. Let's see what he does here. And a black spear the 4-3. Um, yeah, we'll let that happen. So now we can black spear a 2-2. Two -two. He kind of just messed up. Is we can black spear a 2-2, two -two, right? He's setting up for a good Raza play. He wants to be able to kill my entire board. So because of that, now we can kill the 2-2. Two -two. If he slams Raza, he kills both of our units. But because he'll only have two units, our Raza will just reverse board wipe him. And we'll come ahead in the trade again. And if he doesn't play Raza, then... I mean, we're still ahead in the trade because we have better units. So, so we had that really nicely lined up. Because he killed our unit beforehand, which is nice. Which we could have done that either way. Even if he did just slam Raza, then we could have still just black speared a 2-2 and then raza it anyways. So I really had it lined up either way with the two spell mana. I always try and have two spell mana on turns I have Raza. Because it's also, it's really good for Vile Feast to counter their Raza. And okay, sweet. So this is a really good box turn. We can play Elise. I know what and then if they play one more creature to go under deny mana, we can just box for free. Nice. Oh, just kidding. He didn't attack. I'm an idiot. I could have just got a 3 for 1 with Vox and then won, but... Eh, sometimes I'm dumb. Don't mind me. I didn't know why I thought he was going to attack. But ignore my misplay there and do the right thing and box his 3 units. Because he was only at 2 mana anyway, so he can't, can't deny you. You box 3 units and then you actually just go to your turn and win. But... Yeah, ignore my misplay there. And you'll be good to go. <laughs> you'll be better than I am. Trust me. Just because my rank says diamond, that does not mean I'm good at this game. Very interesting. Okay, I guess we'll go to attacks. And we'll attack. Yeah. Yeah, right there, you just box, go to your turn, and then you hit him for nine. And I guess he stays at one because you drained something. Oh, no, because you actually hit him for ten with the lead. Yeah, lethal. But the more you know, the less you'll miss Like me. AKA, don't be bad like me. And now he has to block Ledros. Fairly certain. Sweet. And... I'm actually going to spider the 1-1 one -one in case he has a second... In case he has a second, uh... What is it called? Uh, Raza. This way, the Raza will just kill off two 1-1s. One -ones. The bad thing about this plan is if you go to kill prematurely and he glimpses in response, then that could put him possibly back into the game. We must all make... So I always like to not use my kill spells unless I have to, 
point unless they can't glimpse. Because if they counter one of your kill spells with a glimpse, it's really good for them and can bring them back into the game. And if you counter their glimpse with a kill spell, you just get a free win, basically. So. Alright, so that was pretty good. That was a pretty good mirror match. And we'll probably do one more game here. Alright, I have no fucking clue what this deck is. I have no idea what this deck is, but hopefully this can just show you that this deck is pretty strong by itself. And or it's just like a strong mid-range deck, and you can usually just punish people that are playing random decks. Usually, if your opponent's on just some random bullshit, you should be able to kill them, or like beat them on average. I mean, unless they made a deck that's specific to beat your deck, which I have not ran across yet. Hopefully this is a guy playing just some random bullshit, and we just kill him. You just watched a video on Elise Ezreal deck? What does it play? I've, I've literally never seen this combo. Ezreal and Elise. Okay, so... Yep, we just play a creature that he can't block. Come on. I must get out of here. I follow Elise. Wow. I know just the place. And we'll just trade with the Elise. I don't know what this guy's game plan is, but uh we so I don't even have to trade with the Elise. We just block this and then on our turn get in for a bunch of damage. Because we have here some creatures that he can't block. Six damage. Boom, boom. He's stupid if he plays Ezreal. Alright. Yeah, pro tip for anyone out there wanting to play an Ezreal deck. Don't ever play Ezreal unless your Ezreal is leveled up. Just don't do it. It's literally not worth the 3 mana. Put down to 1-3. Unless your hand... No, I think burst spells aren't even... Like, they literally just don't do anything. Oh, I wish I had a glimpse, but I don't. Um... Yeah, a glimpse would punish him super hard right here. We can just play get a rare. And he can't attack us anymore. And we get in for six more damage. That's fearsome. Oh, that's a drain. If he goes to drain us, we'll just drain ourselves. Oh, glimpse. No, okay, we'll drain that. So he doesn't draw two cards. And we denied a glimpse. So, we're looking pretty good. Dude, imagine if we had a glimpse. They could have glimpsed our own unit, drawn two cards, and then denied his glimpse. You know how big of a swing that would have been? Holy hell. Holy shit. Okay, now we play Thresh. What do you like? And we will pull either a lease or if you play something with three. Alright, we just get in here. He can block the one one with his spider, but we don't care about that. He hasn't played any removal spells from PNT yet. Which is kind of worrying. Like, I almost wonder if it's just some weird combo deck. And as I say that, here comes deal one damage to two draw cards. Oh, okay. That's fine. Alright, he does get one glimpse off, sadly. Because we were just gonna pull it with Rush. But, hopefully it doesn't matter too much. But I definitely recommend this deck to climb with. 
the way I look at climbing a ladder is on the ladder, you have to assume that everybody is better than you. And so you have to play well and your deck has to perform well. Like, I think if you're sitting there and blaming your deck every single game, it's more than likely not your deck. It's probably you. But if your deck is messing up a lot, then you probably need to switch decks to a more consistent deck on ladder. Because if you're already trying to play people that are better than you, like, that's just a, a thing. You know, like, I played a game earlier, and I'm Diamond 4 right now, and it put me up against a Masters player. Now, is the actual player better than me? Um, I'm not sure. Like, as far as skill testing goes, I don't know, because I haven't played them before. I don't know who they are, stuff like that. However, um, what is this? However, he has a higher rank than me, so therefore, on paper... He looks like he's better than me, so you have to play around that. Well, Elise, I know what love and we're gonna grasp our own Elise. Grasp will transform, and then next turn we'll swing in with the Thresh and hopefully a Hecarim. And you assume everybody is better than you just based off of rankings. So, the most consistent deck will be the best deck to climb with. Which, at the moment, this is the most consistent deck. That consistently beats random junk like this. And by junk, I don't mean like trash. I mean, that's a magic term. There's a magic deck called junk, and it's basically just a whole bunch of rares. And like, epics and legendary type cards. So, it's literally just all just good cards by themselves, but no real synergy. It's just like a deck that's a deck. So, it beats random junk pretty consistently. And the deck itself doesn't screw you over too often. Like, yeah, you can draw, like, a bunch of denies or something, but that's not actually the deck screwing you over. It's just the specific cards you drew for that match was not the ideal cards. However, that's going to happen a lot less often than if you play, like, a control deck, right? And a control deck... You're going to have cards that are good against aggro, and then you're going to have cards that are good against mid-range, and then cards that are good against the other control matchups. The problem there is what happens when you're playing against an aggro deck, but you draw the control half of your deck, like the cards that are good against the control matchup. You're just going to lose. You're going to look dumb because your opponent's playing three manas by turn two. I'm sorry, three creatures by turn two, and then you're going to be sitting there with absolutely nothing in your hand. Not worth anything. Uh, we are going to Ledros. I think he has a Ruination in his hand. And if you Ledros, it puts him to one. He can't Ruination you. Because you just kill him on your turn. All right, we won. See, so we don't even know what our opponent was playing. And is his deck bad, necessarily? No, his deck maybe wasn't a terrible deck or a bad deck. It's just that maybe it's not as fine-tuned as your deck. And because I was always placing threats and always, you know, just my deck was always progressing its game plan. Whereas he seemed to have stumbled there a little bit for a turn or two. We were able to just punish him and win the game before he was able to pull off any type of combo or do whatever it was he wanted to do. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. I Again, I don't um, usually recommend people or tell people build this deck because that puts a lot of pressure on me if you use your wild cards on it. You know, you only get three champion wild cards a week that you can buy. And so if you spend your $20 and you buy half of this deck and then maybe you don't enjoy the deck as well or maybe the meta shifts in a few days and the deck isn't nearly as good... Then it looks bad on me, and then you'll get upset with me, because you spent all of your wild cards on it. But, at the moment, if you're looking today, on you know, January 4th, for a deck to build to be really consistent and win games with, I would say build this deck. Uh, I was able to go from Platinum to Diamond with this deck, and it's just super consistent and really good. So, that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I stream on Twitch Monday through Friday, and I post videos here Wednesday and Saturday. So go follow me on Twitch, subscribe here so you guys don't miss anything. Also, I have a Discord now, so join the Discord below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.